Trustee Fenton? Here. Trustee Dodge? Here. Trustee Calandrello? Here. Trustee Healy? Here. Trustee Katsinas? Here. Trustee Milani? Here. Mayor Pico? Here. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of December 16, 2019, regular meeting minutes. Mr. Chairman. Trust Fenton. Move to approve the minutes of the Board of Trustees meeting of December 16, 2019. Second. Any questions? Call roll. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Honor Tim Lodick. Um, so tonight uh, we're going to honor Tim Lotek, a uh, Army veteran and a Village of Orland Park resident. And uh, after I heard the following story, I felt compelled um, to honor Mr. Lotek. Uh, in November of last year, a call came into our Orland Park Veterans Commission office from an Orland Park resident, a Korean War veteran, uh, Mr. Herbert Summers. He's an 89-year-old combat veteran who was short on food and needed help to get to Jewel. We told Mr. Summers that we would find help. At this time, there just so happened to be an Army veteran, Tim Lotak, that needed help getting his veteran status on his driver's license because while in Nashville on a business trip, someone took his jacket with his driver's license and wallet. While speaking with our veteran's assistant, Daryl Wertheim, Mr. Summers' story came up in a conversation. Without hesitation, Mr. Lotak said, I will help. After obtaining his driver's license, Tim contacted Mr. Summers met him and his wife, and drove her to the grocery store, helped her shop, load the groceries, and bring the groceries into their home. Tim commented to Daryl, two very nice people that needed a little assistance. The story doesn't end there. A few days later, Tim contacted Daryl and said, sometimes when you do good things for good people, good things happen to you. I told you that I lost my wallet in Nashville while I was traveling for work. Two days after, we met someone we met, someone sent my jacket and my wallet, st still in it, by mail to me from Florida. They must have grabbed my jacket on accident. I'm proud to present you with a Community Pride Award for your kindness and selfless act of assisting a fellow veteran and Orland Park resident in the time of need. Your actions bring honor to yourself and pride to all of the residents of Orland Park. Congratulations. In conclusion on that as well, someone said something to me today that I thought resonated as well. And we honored Tim for, you know, I mean, just a, a wonderful act of kindness. But I do think these acts of kindness happen a lot more than we think. And we just don't hear about them. I'm very glad we got to hear about this one and honor you, though. So thank you. I would like to thank Carol as well because I didn't expect to run into him that day. I did. And uh, he, you know, what a great guy. And he told me a little bit about your service. So, um, you know, just being able to meet the two people that I did were wonderful people. Um, but I think, you know, in our community, that's an example um, for our children to take care of elderly people. So that's, that's the most important part of that. Thanks again. Okay. Illinois Association Muse Museum's 2019 Best Practices Award. Mr. Mayor. 
Trustee Fenton. Um, at this time, I'd just like to um, present to the board and to the village the um, Illinois Association of Museums awarded the Village of Orland Park and the Village of Orland Park History Museum and the Stellwagen Farm Buildings their 2019 Best Practice Award for Superior Achievement in Building and Site Preservation. So we received this. Sarah, our curator from the museum, uh, was very kind. She picked this up at um, the presentation. And just a little background on this. Um, the Orland Park History Museum and the Stellwagen Farm was awarded the 2019 Best Practice Award from the Illinois Associations of Museums. This organization's mission is to promote best practices, foster the exchange of new ideas, and advocate for museum community. The Orland Park History Museum has been a member of this association since 2017. We first applied for the Best Practice Award in 2019 and was awarded this award in November. This award is for a superior achievement in building and site preservation for the Stellwagen Farm. The Stellwagen Farm has many outbuildings plus the home. The family um, took it upon themselves to restore at their own cost all 10 of the outbuildings that are out there, so you need to really get out to the Stellwagen Farm and look at it. And the Village of Orland Park, within the agreement, we are in the process of restoring the, um, the home. Uh, we've already done the door that faces west. We've done some uh, foundation work, which is back to the original limestone foundation. Uh, Sarah and her volunteers have been in there. They, um, the asbestos was removed. They didn't do that. The asbestos people did. Um, ripping out carpeting, taking down the wallpaper. They found, I think it was three years or three generations of wallpaper in there. Um, and beautiful hardwood floors that were underneath the, um, the carpet that was there. So we're down to the original flooring in there. Uh, the museum board has also gotten very involved with this. The Stellwagen Family Foundation meets at the museum, and the two boards are working together to continue to preserve our history out there. And we have a lot of visitors. We do tours in September. And we will continue to do that. Uh, the museum has a couple activities that we're going to be doing out there. A tea and what was the other one? Wine. Wine tasting. Got to go. Um, so if you don't like tea, definitely come for wine. Um, so these are activities that we just really want to bring the community out there. We have a lot of people who just stop by to show their grandchildren that you know, this wasn't just always the mall or everything that you see on LaGrange Road, that it was a farm and that's where it started. And we do have two farms. The other one is the Bowley Farm on 151st and just um, west of 80th Avenue. So on behalf of myself and the board, I'm hoping, I'd like to thank Sarah for continuing to apply for these awards. It's the second one that we've received. We also um, received the Illinois Landmark Association Award um, and that we went to in October. And that was a big, beautiful award that shows the whole ceremony. So we've received, ver uh, which put us on the map also. So we've received two prestigious awards, and um, hopefully that this board will continue to support the ongoing renovations out there. And um, it's, it's great for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah, for all your hard work. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Accounts payable from December 17, 2019 to January 6, 2020. I'll entertain a motion to approve the accounts payable from December 17, 2019 through January 6, 2020 in the amount of $3,244,925.12. So moved. Second. Are there any questions or comments? <coughs> Call the roll. Trustee Milani. Hi. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Kitsinas. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Consent agenda. Consent agenda item A, payroll for December 2017, 27, 2019 approval. Item B, Centennial Park West events and walks. Item C, ordinance authorizing disposal and destruction of municipal property, gas mask filters and auto injectors. Item D, land development code amendments one. Item E, ready mix concrete purchase payment. Item F, elevated tank number five rehabilitation con construction engineering proposal. Item G, consulting engineering services for comprehensive sanitary sewer evaluation contract services. Item H, equipment purchase source well award. Item I, replacement of police patrol vehicles purchased uh, proposal. Item J, grasslands basin dam intergovernmental agreement with MWRD GC. Resolution. Item K, temporary human resources staffing services extension of government temps, gov temps, employee leasing agreement C19-0138-2019-0656. 
Item L, Village Hall Complex Improvement Change Orders. Item M, Waterfall Plaza Development Agreement. I'll entertain a motion to approve items A through M of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Are there any questions or comments? Call the roll. Trustee Fenton? Aye. Trustee Milani? Aye. Trustee Dodge? Aye. Trustee Calandrello? Aye. Trustee Healy? Aye. Trustee Katsinas? Aye. Mayor Pico? Aye. Amend Title Seven, Chapter Four, Number of Class C Liquor License. Orange Summer, please. Five four seven four. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Calandrello. I move to pass Orange Number Five Four Seven Four, uh, entitled in Orange Amending Chapter Excuse Me Title Seven, Chapter Four of the Orange Park Municipal Code regarding the available license number of Class C uh, liquor licenses issued by the Village of Orland Park, Cook and Will Counties, Illinois. Second. Second. And just to give everyone an overview, uh, we have one individual or one uh, company in this co in this class that is not renewing their license, so we're lowering the uh, liquor licenses available. Any other questions or comments? Call the roll. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Resolution expressing support for efforts by the federal government and the state of Illinois to stop the abuse of national and state telecommunication networks and urge the Federal Communication Commission and the Illinois Attorney, Attorney General to investigate a scourge of vile, defamatory, and anonymous robocalls inundating residents of Orland Park, Illinois. Mr. Mayor. Trustee Healy. Uh, could I have a resolution number, please? 1932. I move to recommend adopting resolution 1932, expressing support for efforts by the federal government and the state of Illinois to stop the abuse of national and state telecommunication networks and urge the Federal Communications Commission and the Illinois Attorney General to investigate a scourge of vile, defamatory, and anonymous robocalls inundating residents of Orland Park, Illinois. Second. And before we go into board discussions, and before, I'm going to let uh, um, residents speak on this. Uh, there are some that are here to speak. Um, but uh, first, I want to comment. There were two more robocalls since last Thursday. Um, the first was about Secretary of State closing, and we've dealt with dozens of phone calls, and there have been several dozen comments on Facebook. <clears throat> I find the timing of this interesting <laughs> just because the Secretary of State has recently been discussed in executive session. Um, let me share the basic facts without going into all of the executive session details. I asked our village manager to look into the Secretary of State lease due to all of the issues our employees deal with here in the village hall related to Secretary of State customers. Particularly now that we don't have an information desk person who 95% of what she handled was Secretary of State issues. What we found out is the Secretary of State has been operating here in the village hall with no lease agreement for over 25 years. They pay no rent and the residents of Orland Park are liable for any incidents that may happen with customers, slip and falls, injuries, et cetera. Um, clearly, they didn't just move into the village hall with no one knowing, so there was some type of handshake years ago, some kind of off the books agreement, quid pro quo, if you will, whatever, at that time. It's unacceptable for the Secretary of State not to have a lease that protects the village and its residents. It's also unacceptable for the residents to be shouldering those costs particularly because since my arrival here alone, the state has taken between four to five million dollars away from our village due to cuts in funding and additional charges to the village. Not to mention a 50% hike this year in vehicle taxes on all of us. Our residents should not bear this risk or this cost. So therefore, the board had this discussion and we unanimously agreed to ask the Secretary of State to sign a lease and pay rent. Those discussions are still ongoing. So the robocall was not, uh, was not accurate in any way. I don't want to go, I can't go into any other details because again, these discussions are ongoing. With that, um, regarding the robocalls, I'll uh, open it up to the residents. If uh, Robert Barrett, and a reminder to residents, you get three minutes, um, which we do keep track of, so uh, three minutes to speak. Not a problem, Robert Barrett. I live in Strandhill. And I've been receiving robocalls, like you just mentioned. I've got two of them on my phone as recorded. 
One about Strand Hill and how our property values have decreased, which is totally felonious. Uh, as you, if you look at Orland in general, matter of fact, in the Prairie, it talked about uh, the occupancy rate that we have in Orland is one of the best in the nation, uh, and property values are increasing. So you know it's a, it's a, a blast against us. Uh, one of our board of directors was was their phone number was given out in this robocall, and that person has gotten phone calls on you know uh, blasting her. Uh, it's just unwarranted. And I've gotten the ones that uh, I've got, recorded one that was about uh, you, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, uh, back in November. And I, I just delete the ones lately. So I'm all for the resolution and, and finding this person and bringing them ju to justice. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Susan uh, Kathemeyer. Sorry if I butchered your name. Good evening, board. My name is Susan Kathemer. I live on Dunmurray Drive. Um, Bob had uh, referred to me. I'm the, one of the board members. I'm the secretary of Southmore. Uh, one of the robocalls directed our residents to call me with complaints. Um, the robocall was defaming our law firm for the community, Southmore. And also, um, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. Uh, all the accusations the party made were incorrect and, like I said, def um, were defamatory. And um, he gave out my home phone number, and I did not appreciate that. Uh, it has upset all the residents in our community. And I would really like to see the robocalls cease. I do have the recording if you need it. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, please get those recordings to our uh, village manager assistant village manager up here. Wayne Schimmel. Mr. Mayor, uh, trustees of the village, thank you very much for your time and for the ability to speak about this. As both of my colleagues from the board, we're, we're all on the board of directors at Southmore. Uh, over the last several weeks, we have received numerous uh, anonymous robocalls. We've received um, uh, anonymous leaflets that have been posted and, and dropped in, uh, in people's mailboxes. And I think it's very safe to say, based on the amount of feedback that we've received from a fair number of the 265 families that, that live in Southmore, that the community is very concerned about this activity. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you mentioned that, these, that the, the, the content and the nature of the robocalls is offensive and harassing and whatnot. Uh, we couldn't agree more. Uh, there have been threats made in some of the handouts that have been distributed in mailboxes that if the board does not resign or the property management company does not resign or the lawyers don't resign, that even more defamatory and false and inaccurate and libelous information will be disseminated to all the residents, which is very frustrating. It's very frightening, quite frankly. Uh, we're all volunteers. We're trying to do the best job that we can to maintain the the community, and uh, we really have run into a brick wall with trying to deal with this. Uh, on behalf of our association, what we'd like to do, Mr. Mayor, is request a meeting with you in your office, with Chief McCarthy and, and his personnel, to further discuss this, this issue and to see if there's a way that we could bring this to a, a prompt resolution. We understand that you've been recipients of a lot of these uh, calls as well. Not, sure if they're from the same individual, but nonetheless, I, I think that there's some definite shared frustration. So our message is we want to cooperate to whatever extent we can to, to bring this to a speedy resolution on behalf of the entire Southmore community. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. And uh, George, could you please get with them? We have all the contact information. Be happy to have that meeting. 
And it appears that Southmore's been getting these calls too. These aren't even the calls that I'm aware of that have been sent to me, to us that have been village-wide. So I was aware Southmore was getting them, but obviously you're getting a lot of calls as well. Um, uh, Dave DeYoung. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Board of Trustees. I thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk about the robocalls this evening, uh, same as many people here. I see you have on your agenda a, a resolution uh, addressing this issue. And uh, on behalf of, obviously, and myself and my family and other people throughout our community, I strongly encourage you to, uh, to pass this resolution and to work with the, the authorities at the state and federal level to uh, enforce the statutes that have uh, been prepared as it relates to, to robocalls. The, uh, I received one Friday and another on, on my cell phone and one uh, Sunday on my, my home phone. Yes, I do have a hardwired cell phone. It must be an age thing. But uh, just vile lies about people, allegations of village officials paying bribes to people, allegations of village officials receiving bribes, uh, all of which, of course, are, are, are nonsense. And uh, it reflects poorly on, on folks who really work hard in this community. Okay? I know the time and effort that you people put in. And uh, it's from the heart. You, you do it because you love our community, as, as we all do. And to hear these types of, of lies and statements being made about people and, and, and you know, just libelous and slanderous and allegations of, of felonies being committed by, by village board members and village officials, kind of stuff just makes you sick. And uh, I think long term, not only does it hurt the reputation of, of all of us in our community, there are a lot of good people that live in this community who would like to contribute their time and efforts. And things like this keep going on, they're going to, afraid to get, they're going to be afraid to get involved because they don't want to be the subject of the next robocall that somebody is making. So I strongly encourage you to pass the resolution that is on the agenda this evening. And once again, uh, Mayor and Board of Trustees, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your comments. Kevin Mescal. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Board of Trustees. I'd just like to kind of make a comment that was kind of surprising what Mayor Bacall had said earlier, that this Secretary of State was discussed in executive session, but yet a robocall comes out on that? How is that possible? Do they have a bug in your room? Is someone blabbing after the meeting on something like that? Very, very inappropriate from my perspective. I think that's absolutely wrong. Secondly, the second robocall basically is slamming the mayor, calling him Hitler-ish, uh, calling our new village manager like an idiot. I'm paraphrasing, of course. But if I'm not mistaken, each and every one of you voted for him for his job. So that kind of surprises me as well, that you guys would allow things like that to happen. Now, I'm not blaming anybody here on the board for doing this, you know, because I have no proof of anything. But I do think these robocalls need to stop. It needs to be investigated. We need to get down to the root problem on who is doing this, because this is very inappropriate behavior. Maybe this is the way it worked in the city, but, you know, we're Orland Park. I think that we're better than that. And I think that all of you guys can get together and discuss things reasonably without having to run behind and have a robocall come up. That's just my perspective on it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your comments. And uh, that's the last person to speak on the robocall, so I'll open it up to board comments. Mr. Mayor. Trustee Healy. <laughs> I'd just like to say a couple things about the robocalls. The, uh, uh, some of them have already been said, but robocalls don't make our village a better place. The cabal of people funding, assisting, or otherwise participating should be held in the full contempt. But uh, these robocalls are meant to intimidate people from participating in the process. And uh, I can just, you know, like to appeal to people that don't let this intimidate you, rise up against it, and encourage people, more people to participate. It's wonderful having the privilege to serve your community up here. Um, 
Oh, yeah, and I'd just like to also point out that on one hand, you know, it's ironic that in this meeting, Mr. Mayor, that we had the robocalls at the bottom. We have Tim Lotak at the top of what can happen in this community. So I'd say let's emphasize the Tim Lotaks and, you know, use him as an example of uh, being the best we can. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman? Trustee Milani. Um, you know, I think probably many of us up here are probably happy to see this resolution drawn up. To be blunt, I think we're all tired of the robocalls. Our residents, the people outside of Orland Park, they're all tired of them. No matter what side they were attacking, the legal calls were just that, illegal. They were vicious, they were vulgar, usually unfounded or misconstrued facts to spin a storyline. They've also crossed the line attacking friends, families, spouses, and children of elected officials. How low do you have to go? I think these need to be investigated fully. The perpetrator of these calls must be stopped, fined, or whatever it takes to get him or her to stop. They're starting to not only tarnish the perception of our village, they're also starting to turn off the residents of Orland Park, as we've just heard. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Mayor? Trustee Katsinas. I just wanted to thank the residents for standing up and telling your stories. It's not easy to do. This is a form of intimidation, you know, and we're better than that. We're not going to let them get to us for exactly the reason Trustee Healy stated. It's trying to deter other good people from stepping up to do good things. They're wrong. We know they're wrong, and sometimes you don't want to talk about them to give it legs to give it even more credence. But I, I appreciate everyone coming here that has spoken out on them. Something has to be done. And I know if there was anything Chief McCarthy could do, it would have been done already. Hands are kind of tight on it. So thank you for coming. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Chair. Trustee Fenton. Um, I only got the two phone call, the two robocalls. I didn't get the one about sophomore, and I do live not far from where sophomore is. Um, so that's a very interesting news to me. Um, as far as investigating, I agree with Trustee Katsinas. If Chief Carthy could have done anything, he would have already done it. I know in the past there was an investigation or request an investigation from the Attorney General. I don't know whatever happened to that, but that's when it started way back when the calls were going to people's cell phones. Um, I know my daughter-in-law gets them. She lives in Tinley. She gets them on her cell phone and it freaks her out to no end. So um, I totally agree this resolution is something maybe we should have done a little bit sooner. Hopefully the state, though they move as snails, um, will attempt to see that this is very serious, that the residents are concerned, we're concerned, our government is concerned, and something gets done about it. But I know it was looked into in the past and nothing happened. So to my knowledge, nothing happened. So hopefully this will do something. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman? Trustee Calandrello. I just want to thank all the residents for coming out and talking about their stories about the robocalls. We've all been attacked on this dais, um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to support this, and uh, hopefully sooner or later this will end. Thank you. Mayor Pico. Trustee Dodge. The calls are wrong, and it's, uh, it's shameful that people are taking advantage of the technology to do the things they're doing, including spoofing, so it looks like it's coming from a uh, from a local number, and uh, I hope that the authorities do something about it because, you know, you, we don't have to get to this level. I mean, I think some paraphrasing some of the comments earlier, there's been plenty of disagreements um, over the years on this and other boards, but I don't think that I've ever seen in, the, in let's say, in the last uh, two and a half years anything so low. I mean, if you're going to bring up a political issue or an issue of public policy, put your name to it. It's pretty simple. Put your name to it. And don't spoof the, uh, the phone numbers. Don't game it with the, uh, with the uh, technology to kind of hide behind it. So I would concur with this board. It's not doing anybody any favors. And if you really if you have an issue with somebody, put your name to it. So my comments, first I echo the comments of everyone here on the board. Um, keep in mind what's been said about this in the past from me, uh, and I think others, is that this is meant to divide everybody and cause these issues, whether you agree with things or don't agree, or even the last, the, the first two years, uh, you know, two years ago, it was the same thing. It was meant to divide people. Um, since March, there have been over 20 calls. I have been personally attacked in at least 19 of these. 
and didn't really speak out about those until they started to attack spouses and children of trustees. However, my wife and brother have been targeted. Trustee Milani's wife and children were targeted. Also, since March, and other trustees were attacked prior to March, but I don't have all of those robocalls saved because uh, they weren't all sent to me. Um, also since March, Trustee Healy, Katsinas, and Milani have been targeted. Deputy Chief Mitchell's been targeted. Police Chief Tim McCarthy. Village Attorney Dennis Walsh. Village Manager George Kazwara. Orland Park Catholic Residents. Papa Joe's, Foxes, Crystal Tree, Austin Tyler, and Horton Insurance have all been targeted. Enough is enough. In those 19 attacks on me off the top of my head, and this is off the top of my head, I've been accused of bribery, pay for play, embezzlement, theft, adultery, falsifying my military record, being dishonorably discharged from the military, bid rigging, child abuse, being kicked out of the Navy, and I was in the Air Force, and now I've been called Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> These calls are very damaging to Orland Park. Interestingly, they track closely with over 50 FOIA requests, requests we, have we have received from the same individual. This individual has also sent over 40 emails with eerily similar accusations against the same people I just mentioned. Perhaps more, most interestingly, this person who sent the FOIAs and emails owns a robocall company and lives in Southmore, which is new information from tonight. It shouldn't be too hard for the government agencies that have responsibility for enforcing these laws to find who's doing this. Maybe this will help put pressure on these agencies to do their jobs. And given the fact that we just passed a federal law addressing this very same issue, it's time for these agencies to actually step up and do their jobs. So, and I'm with uh, Trustee Healy. Um, we need to spend more time talking about the Tim Lotax of the world than these robocalls, but unfortunately it's just something we have to deal with. So um, it's important that we act on this, and so um, obviously this resolution has my support. With that, call the roll. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. John Humphrey Confle Complex 2021 Scheduling. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Trustee Milani. Um, I move to table item 2020-0027, John Humphrey Complex 2021 scheduling. Second. Are there any questions or comments? No table. No table, no, okay. Call the roll. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Fenton. No. Trustee Dodge. No. Trustee Calandrello. No. Trustee Katsinas? Yes. Mayor Pico? Aye. Motion is tabled. Carries four to three. That's it. You have okay. Um, so now we have non scheduled uh, citizen visitors. Uh, Coach Hokinson? Hi. Uh, even though I'm no longer part of the Pioneer family, you know, when I hear what's going on, and it saddens me, I raised my kids out on the Pioneer football field from the time they were born. And I know what the Humphrey Complex means to us, but at the same time, this past summer, I was able to walk out there and I was talking with some of the workers about drainage and stuff like that to get the proper drainage put in. And the guy literally with the heel of his boot kicked back about maybe a half an inch of dirt and I'm looking at concrete and blacktop. Now I don't know if everybody here understands what the complex was, but it used to be wetlands many, many years ago. Then the Orland Township Highway Commission took it over and backfilled it with their debris. Then it got turned into a baseball field complex. And then, by the grace of Orland Park, they gave us the outfields for football. Now, there are trustees up here that's been here for 30 years promising the pioneers that we're going to do something. Now, we had an incident with the library. It got pushed back. Then we had a problem at Centennial Pool, and the football fields got pushed back. Now, there's one person up here over the past two and a half years who's come up with a plan 
that I think will work for everybody. Now, does it make it perfect? No. If everybody knows me, I love Humphrey. I mean, looking at this complex, you do not know how many times over 25 years I had other teams come in here and go, my God, what college is that? I mean, we have no complex like this. But the fields were completely, excuse my word, crap. No proper drainage. You can't put proper drainage out there. It would probably cost close to four and a half million dollars to excavate, backfill, and put in proper drainage. One now, Suchler is not my best bet, but everything that I've read and seen proposed where we're going to have a fill turf, a full size fill turf football field, which at this time, I would like for that field to be named after a great football coach from the Pioneers, Coach Joe P., who, I mean, the man never stood more than five foot seven. But in my eyes, he was a giant because when he bent over to help up all the kids, you know, he was 10 foot tall. So I hope that we can recognize the work that he did and the sacrifices he made for the program. You know, Time's I understand up, everything is not perfect. I would love to see a football stadium built somewhere. But in my lifetime, because I don't have much left, that I'm not going to see it. But I am going to fight like hell. And those people on the board that have been here, who's been standing in our way, who's always put football behind everybody else, watch out, because we're coming. Time's up, Thank Coach. you. Thank you for your comments. Jenny Shawanka. A reminder that um, board comments are, or, uh, excuse me, public comments are three minutes long. Hi, my name is Jenny Sirwanka and I'm the president of the Orland Park Pioneers. Hokey, with all due respect, he has not been a part of our program for 10 years and he does not speak for us or know the needs that we have currently. Mr. Mayor, we share the same beliefs as you do, that football and cheerleading teach children valuable skills, teamwork, discipline, the value of hard work, respect, and leadership. Pioneer football and cheerleading teaches our youth not only how to win with humility, but even more importantly, how to cope with defeat, how to move on and overcome when something doesn't go your way. Mayor Pico, in your mayoral update, you mentioned that a deal was made between the Pioneer Board and the Village in 2017 regarding Schusler Park. As it was stated in December of 17, this is not true. There were four board members present and four members of a 15-member board cannot make a decision. The village manager who was present at that meeting confirmed that a deal was not made. Not only did the Pioneer Board vote that Schusler Park was unacceptable, but so did the Village Board, St. Mike's, and the Orland Park Knights. Having said this, I propose that together we move forward and work together on our common goal of making football a priority in Orland Park. If you go on the Village website, you'll find there are 38 baseball or softball fields, 20 soccer fields, and one, I repeat, one football field. This one football field, the John Humphrey Complex, has been the pioneer home for many years. At this time, it is the only place in Orland Park that has everything our organization needs so we can provide our athletes a safe space to expel, practice, and host games. Is it the Village Board's intention to not allow the Orland Park Pioneers, the only public youth football organization in Orland, to play at the only football field in Orland Park? The Pioneer organization has been portrayed as being stubborn and uncooperative. Trustee Milani, you posted that One we minute. We are so unwilling to work to an agreement. This is not true. We are a youth program, and with that comes the responsibility to provide a program where our kids are having fun and given the opportunity to learn their craft in a safe space. To ensure this, yes, our pioneer board and community will fight for what we feel is best for our young athletes.
That is because we believe in our program. Our organization has been working with the village. If we determine a space will not work for us or does not provide what we need as an organization, we are not being difficult. We are being responsible. The pioneers are not opposed to a new home. However, a safe, adequate alternative to the John Humphrey complex has not been proposed to us. There are several concerns we have with the proposed plan at Centennial Park. The pioneers have 250 to 300 youth athletes. There is no way enough space for our entire organization. Our concerns are that a regulation field in that space would have grading and drainage issues. There would be concerns regarding the location of trees, sewer drains, and sprinkler boxes. There would not be adequate space. Up. Mr. Mayor, I ask you for a 60 second extension. You can have another 30 seconds. These concerns are about safety and they are about regulations. This site was also proposed to the Pioneers in 17. It was also proposed to the Orland Park Knights. They all decided the same thing. It was not a viable option. We have a responsibility to these kids to provide a quality experience. We thank you, Mr. Mayor, for your promise of putting football first and of a dedicated football facility. We look forward to seeing this dream become a reality. However, until this dream does become reality, there is only one football field in Orland Park, the John Humphrey Complex. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Andrew Brown. I would uh, first like to thank Mayor Pekow and the trustees of Orland Park for the opportunity to speak here tonight. A few of you know me. I said this last month. My name is Andrew Brennan. I am a father, a youth baseball coach, a football coach, a board of the Pioneers, and I serve on the Orland Park Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee appointed by Mayor Pekow. I appreciate the mayor's full support of the Pioneer program. I appreciate the fact that a majority of the trustees have been involved in the Pioneer program. I fully believe that we all want the same thing, a safe environment for our children to learn and enjoy football and cheerleading. We've exchanged a few emails. We've all given a few public comments, but we have yet to sit down at a table with all parties involved and talk face to face. As we are all aware, the Pioneers currently do not have a home or even a temporary home to host games or even practice at. As I stated last month, Orland Park has three facilities that would theoretically work for our program, barring an absolute major overhaul of any other existing park. Schuessler would need significant investment and is a logistical nightmare. Centennial needs moderate investment and is a logistical challenge. The John Humphrey Complex needs zero investment and has zero logistical challenges. The mayor has made the point that football has been neglected and it's time to build a permanent solution for the Orland Park Pioneers. We agree and we thank you. But what do we do until then? What do we do until then? A proposal was sent to us at the end of last week. That proposal didn't even come close to providing our children with a safe environment, let alone providing anywhere near the space that we require. Furthermore, that proposal has us practicing on baseball fields. If youth football destroys baseball fields, why do we keep getting put on baseball fields? <clears throat> Orland Park has more than enough room at Centennial. If we can sit down and discuss the actual safety needs of our program, our program cannot be divided across parts of Orland Park. As I clearly stated last month, it's simply too taxing on our families. Some of are who here? 30 seconds. Some. If it's time we stop wedging football where it doesn't fit, then why do the proposals wedge football where it doesn't fit? Everyone in this room agrees that we need a new permanent facility for football, but why can't we use John Humphrey temporarily until a new permanent home is 
complete. No answer has been given to this. As a father, a coach, a board member of the Pioneers, I am asking you, as I believe you did earlier, to table any vote on this. Mr. Mayor, when you asked me to be a part of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, you told me that my job was to advise. Well, Mr. Mayor, I am advising you to table this vote, which I believe you did, until next month. And let's sit down and have a face-to-face -face conversation. Time is up. And talk about it. Thank you for the support, and thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight. Thank you for your comments. Are there any other residents that wish to speak? Uh, board comments, Trustee Fenton. Um, first of all, just a little clarification on what you just said about the tabling of the vote. My vote was if we would have voted, it would have been to do a schedule for 2021 for Humphrey for the Pioneers football, because that's where I feel it belongs. If a football ferry comes along and has money to build you a new complex someplace in the village, I would be 100% behind it. You know where that ferry is, though. Well, that's what I'm looking for. Um, but that's why I voted, the vote was to table it, and I was voting that we shouldn't table it, that we should go ahead and schedule you for 2021 at Humphrey. That was my vote for the no. So I just wanted to clarify that because I think it got a little misconstrued there. Um, also, I'd just like to thank staff for all the hard work they did over the holiday season with all of our decorations, all of the events that we did. Um, Sarah, once again, thank you for applying for all these wonderful um, awards that we're receiving for the museum and the cell wagon farm. Um, also, like to thank the chief for a great job this year on retail um, during the holiday season. Uh, that and traffic and everything, you did a great job. Um, kudos out there to um, the public work staff. I know you've put your beet juice down on the streets already when they know they possibly have some icing coming up. Maybe we'll luck out and that snowstorm coming this weekend will miss us too. So um, I also like to wish everyone a happy and healthy, safe and new year 2020 and go football. <clears throat> Trustee Dodge. Just a couple of comments. Um, we'll keep this short. Echo pretty much everything Kathy said, as well as happy to keep working the problem. I think uh, a number of the, the folks here know that it didn't work out quite as anticipated, but I was one of the lead proponents to try and put together a package that would have allowed us to do a permanent multi-sport, fairly big complex for the benefit of Orland Park broadly didn't quite work out. I still think the idea in some way, shape, or form might have merit, so we'll come back to it at some point. And happy to keep working this problem, part of this board, part of staff, you know, the parents who are concerned to figure, figure out a permanent solution. You know, vis-a-vis -vis all the money that we're going to have to find to do this, that was one of the reasons for looking at a large tournament uh, capable facility to kind of give us uh, use to fields uh, alternatively and help fund those kind of improvements. If not, as some of you are uh, students of what this board's been doing in the past uh, year or so, the budget's in pretty good shape, so as debt rolls off, I think we have some opportunities to figure some things out. It's gonna take continued, uh, continued work. So it's pretty straightforward and, you know, new year, new beginnings, new things are coming. Trustee Calendrello. Just a couple of comments, uh, since we weren't able to debate uh, the John Harvey Complex. I kind of feel like it's Groundhog's Day. It's about two years in the past where we had this conversation. We had, we had staff look at Sushler. We had staff look at um, a park at uh, Eagle Ridge. We had staff look at a couple other parks, and we said that there wasn't really a good place, temporary or permanently, to place football. Don't forget we have other teams other than Pioneer who are here today voicing their concerns. And as we stand it, the board gave direction towards that village staff at that time that after the construction of John Humphrey Complex, football will be back at John Humphrey Complex. So until I see a different vote, I think that's the direction of the board. And when we had a community hall discussion and it seemed like there was some confusion, I said, okay, let's end the confusion and have a vote. And now it was tabled and um, for whatever reason it was tabled that, and I respect my board members, I'm not sure why we did that. But at the end of the day, that's the only home we have for football at this time. A new stadium is 10 years away. I'm, my kids may be graduated from college and they're right now toddlers, okay? Unless I get in this ferry that Kathy talks about comes out. There's locations, sure. 
153rd between the, the hospital and the train station. There's a little land there that the village owns, but that's still, it's a dump. It's still getting cleaned out. And we're, we're five to 10 years, five and $10 million. This board is very sensitive of bonding out. We're really keep, we don't want to keep our debt low. I don't think we have the political courage to have a debt for that. I would, but that's one of seven. I just feel like this is Groundhog's Day over again. And until, in my opinion, until there's another shift in direction by the board, you're coming back. Football's coming back in 2021. And if someone wants to correct me, then we have, they have to have a vote if, there's, if, there's, if that's the issue. Um, I just don't see where the harm of having football back at John Humphrey Complex. We did a feasibility study. We did all the homework on this. This is what we have to do and what's right for the kids. Um, and I guess I just really don't get what the fuss is all about, but maybe I'm naive. Um, I want to thank staff and all, I guess back to my normal comments, I want to thank staff for all her work over the holidays. The village looked great. I uh, also want to give a kudos to Nancy and her uh, team for the New Year's Eve event on the 28th, which was a great uh, new event um, that uh, I heard great reviews from. So thank you very much and uh, thank you everyone for coming um, and uh, have a good night. Trustee Healy. Uh, my uh, comment is just that I come from 40 years of experience in the private sector, and I just want to just, just point, after six months now of working with the village and the staff here, I am just amazed at what a great quality of staff and people operate this village. I'm just, it's, it blows me away that how lucky we are to have uh, a great group of people uh, working and administrating uh, this village. And I, um, I hope we can keep up that luck, but boy, I, just from the private industry, I gotta give my tip of my hat to the professionalism and good work that uh, you all do. So thank you. Trustee Getzinas. First, Trustee Fenton stole my message. Now, Trustee Healy just did. Um, just wanted to thank all of our staff, especially the department heads, our village manager and assistant village manager for the outstanding job they do every day, not just during the holidays. When we were new trustees and we had meetings, um, I think the average resident doesn't realize what goes in to managing and, and working a village, making the village work. So. They are true professionals, they're very dedicated, and um, with our new hires, they fit right in. So I appreciate that, appreciate that for our village, and thank you again for residents coming out and speaking. It enlightens us to your concerns, and hopefully try to address them, both with the pioneers and with the Southmore issue. So thank you again, and Happy New Year to everyone. Trustee Milani. Oh, thank you. Um, hope everybody had a great Christmas and a great New Year. Um, it was great seeing the masses of shoppers uh, out and about in Orland Park. Um, many thanks to Tim Lotech. I see he left already, but uh, we definitely appreciate his kindness. Um, also, congratulations to the Hi History Museum and Stillwagon Farms for their achievements. Uh, thank you, Mary Pekow, for changing up the seating arrangement. I'm sure I'll probably sit in the wrong seat at least one more time. Um, now, to uh, respond to the comments from the Pioneer supporters, um, yes, I did motion to table this. Um, the reason I did it, uh, and to answer Kathy Fenton's, or Trustee Fenton's question, um, I don't think we had enough information to make an informed decision and a vote on it tonight. Uh, we have several studies that are going on right now and master planning that isn't complete. And I think if we take a deeper look into those, I think it's something that we can use to make a better decision. Um, that being said, you know, everybody knows that I was part of the Pioneer organization. My son was part of it for eight years. My other son was part of it for a year, and I coached for four or f five seasons. Um, you know, our last, our last season with the Pioneers was 2016, so we played two years in the River Valley League. Um, so I think when we left, uh, all four of the divisions were playing their home games at Sandberg and Marist, um, and I think we played maybe two games at Humphrey. Uh, I'm not sure where the Wednesday night games were held. I know we did have to, to move those around from place to place and to do different things. But, uh, you know, we did, however, practice at Humphrey. And I have a picture to show here. But 
this is how we had to practice. So the JV and varsity split the regulation football field that's very crooked and mislined and has an eight foot drop off from end to end. The lower teams all worked around the areas in the baseball outfields. Also, one of them being lined. The rest of them, we made do in John Humphrey Park. So that's what's confusing me. We, did, we had to make do with what we had. The field was OK at best. And like I'd mentioned uh, at our last meeting, many of the coaches would complain about the condition of the field. And it was virtually unplayable the last seasons. And that way, we were at Sandberg and we were at Marist. Um, so when we talk about a temporary solution to practice problems, and offer considered designing and building a permanent location for football in our, our last meeting, that's why I wonder, is anything ever good enough? You know, you can still play your home games at Sandberg, unless there's a problem there that I don't know about. Uh, and I believe you could still play at Marist for some games, uh, since my kid did it since we were, he was six. We played at Marist all the time, and some of them were home games. <clears throat> um, so I also want to address comparing us to the other teams in the area and their facilities. Uh, many teams in the River Valley League have similar situations to, the, to us. They don't have permanent locations to play football. Uh, let's take, it, let's take uh, the Knights and the Warriors. JV and Varsity practices at Lincoln Way Central. Uh, and for the uh, Warriors, well, one plays at Lincoln Way Central and one plays at Lincoln Way West, they're JV and varsity games. They practice there as well. Where do the remaining parts of their team practice? At the 4 H fields. And that's at Francis Field off of Cedar Road and Francis Road. So they are out there literally, and this is, this is funny, dodging piles of horse manure to practice. And it costs them quite a bit of money to use that facility. Uh, the Homer Stallions, let's compare us to them. They own their own facility at Kilmer Field. The Stallions own the facility. I see uh, uh, Jennifer shaking her head. No, um, I guess that's changed, OK? So moving on. Um, Tinley Park practices at Andrew High School. They play at Joel Thole. Am I right there? OK. Um, Frankfurt Falcons, they play in Alec Park, where their baseball fields are. But yes, they have fields dedicated to football, but they're not really football fields. They're fields. Uh, Tri-City practices at Plainfield South and plays at ATI Field. Morris uses Morris High School. And Frankfurt Square practices at Hilda, Hilda Walker. And the previous Orland Park Knights that are no more practiced on the hill behind the library. So while some of these may be quote unquote dedicated football facilities, many of these teams are doing what the pioneers have been doing since 2016. They've used high school facilities for games and some practices and use other facilities to practice. These facilities weren't permanent, line fields for the football either. So I plead with the pioneer board, please work with us to make football a great experience for the children of Orland Park and not politicize this issue because I feel that's the direction we're heading. We're trying to provide the kids what the or and the organization what you need. But I think, you know, looking at some of our communications that we need cooperation instead of demands. And I'm just kind of curious, you know, Trusty Dodge, Trusty Calandrello, you know, it's like I, I didn't feel that football was a priority here until we had a chance to, you know, politicize this. And, you know, I really hope that we can all work together and come up with a solution that's better for the village, better for the children, most importantly, but also better for the pioneer organizations, because I believe in the organization, and I think it's done great things. So thank you for listening. Thank you for your comments. So my comments, um, so I just want to correct the record um, uh, from Trustee Andrella. We did do a feasibility study, and actually staff and the village manager recommended, uh, recommended to start construction on John Humphrey and move them to Schuessler Park. The village board voted against that recommendation at the request of the pioneers and delayed the project for a year. So that's what happened. I don't know what promises you may have made to the pioneers privately. But individual board members can't speak for the entire village board, nor can they speak for future village boards, just as the current pioneers or the, the previous pioneers board can't speak for the current pioneers board. As I have stated, 
in every public meeting and every meeting with the Pioneers board members and families since being elected mayor in 2017. After decades as an afterthought, Orland Park needs a permanent facility designed and built for football. Designed and built for football. There, previously, there's never been a commitment to the, from the village for a facility designed specifically for football. The Pioneers football and cheer program have a friend in me, and I am confident that the current Village of Orland Park team shares this vision. I know that our staff has been working very hard with the Pioneers, as you said, they've sent you stuff, to come up with an interim facility that will meet the needs of your football and cheer program and are committed to give you an, an interim facility that meets all those needs. Since none of the village's current facilities, including John Humphrey Complex, were built specifically with football in mind, this temporary facility won't be perfect. None of the other fields are perfect either. However, we will continue to work with you to meet as many of the organization's needs as possible. And you will be able to stay whatever location we find. You'll be able to stay there until a permanent location for football is finished. I believe that the youth of Orland Park and surrounding areas need football and cheer and other sports for that matter. Now more than ever, it teaches our youth respect, hard work, dedication, teamwork, goal setting, and sportsmanship. I am confident that working together, the Village and the Pioneer Board can demonstrate how these valuable characteristics can be used to achieve the goal of finally building a football-focused facility in Orland Park that we can all be proud of. I look forward to seeing you at the Village Board meetings and welcome your comments, as well as those from other Pioneer families past and present. Orland is a great place to live, work, and play because of the hard work and dedication of our residents. I am confident that with the collaborative efforts, we can develop a facility that meets all of the Pioneer's needs and simultaneously accounts for the long-term interests of all organizations, residents, and children of Orland Park. I'd also like to echo thanking staff for all their hard work last year. Um, and I want to, again, welcome George, who's now in, what, like week 11, um, who's, who's doing a great job. And uh, so thank you for all your hard work during the holiday season. I hope everybody had a great <coughs> holidays. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I have a question for our attorney real quick. About a point of order, please. About what? A point of order. What's your point of order? And the question wouldn't go to the attorney, it goes to the chair. So Trustee Calandrello? My point of order is if during board comments, if there's a comment directed towards any individual trustee, does that trustee have the ability to at least respond to those comments? Uh, the trustee does not have the ability to respond to those comments. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Trustee Fenton. Move to go in executive session for A, approval of minutes, B, collective negotiating matters between the village and its employees or their representatives, or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees. Second. Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye.